all right everybody how you all doing it's not it's not that nice out there today um uh, it's absolutely pissing the rain and just miserable sometimes i like that kind of weather because it's like this time of year just anchoring the house and um <clears throat> keep away from the shitty weather um feeling a wee bit kind of no no too doing but i'm a wee bit kind of i done the day um i fell out me and my my girlfriend fell out early weekend um no gonna lie it was mostly my fault we had a bad argument over the phone um uh, i've been seeing off since january um and it has been on and off a lot um and it's always been uh hard it's called it off but i'm not got a down off of that because the lassie's been through unimaginable trauma in her life like totally dwarfs anything i've ever went through if i'm being honest um so um i'm a wee bit kind of sad about it but do you know what man like i've been through so much shit in life that um before i, I before the person i used to be i to, totally would not have given a shit man i just and that's because i was too wrapped up in myself and constantly getting back at people who had done whatever slighted me beat up one of my friends <clears throat> it was all about reputation and self-image and all that back then, obviously, but as I've said before, I'm a lot older and wiser now, and um, it's maybe, maybe it's a good thing that I feel sad about it, because it actually shows that I do care, whereas, like, years ago, I just, pff, I'd have been like, right, pff, on to the next one, innit? See you later, all that shit, man, just arrogance and self-absorption you know um but <clears throat> hopefully um this year has been a bit strange in the sense it has been really mixed there's been so many situations that i've not even come on here and spoken about and i mean this locally like just these situations if they'd have happened 10 years ago would have resulted in charges being brought um or me being assaulted, whatever. And the thing that people might be like, so how do you stop yourself from getting charges this time? And it's pretty simple. My son, my son, I'm a single dad, obviously, raising a 12-year-old boy on my own. His mum's not in the picture at all. She's just left him. Um... She has issues, obviously. Um, and if I was to do anything crazy like before, that my son's life would be ruined. He would need to come visit me in jail. And remember, he was visiting me in jail up until he was eight years old. So I don't really want to be putting my kid through that. Do you know, I'm trying to break the cycle, no, keep it going. Um, so that's it but i dare say um if it wasn't for him i really do not know what i would be doing um i would i feel like i probably would never have a purpose maybe i would be on doing talks and talking about my life and how bad it was or my prison experiences or whatever but um there's also a possibility where like the last time when i was out i didn't know if i was like coming or going in regards to prison and being free, I really didn't know. But um, it's just I'm just like because this 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 year was the twenty year anniversary of Mandex offence. What happened in two thousand and three? So next year will be the twenty year anniversary of my sentencing. So two thousand and four wasn't a good year for me. <laughs> um. That was when I was convicted and then sent up to shots in the summer and all this kind of stuff. So um, I'm hoping that 
next year's going to be better because obviously I've 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 done a lot this year as well. Like I've been on people's podcasts and I'm doing my own stuff and like doing my self defence classes and actually sticking at it. So it's not all been um kind of bumps in the road. There's been good stuff as well, but um. I'm hoping that next year we like getting invites to like the Michael Franzese thing and um the one down Cambridge and also there's supposed to be another event that I've not really spoken about yet, um, which is happening in February as well, which is actually through a woman at an Ophi prison. Um she was um she was a, she was actually a head teacher in a school. And she quit because she felt the education system was letting a lot of people down. And then she was coming into prison. She was running the Glee Club, right? This place was mad. In Kilmarnock Jail, right? And I would be sitting in a, a, a room across the corridor, typing up my academic shit. But all, a lot of bo good boys that I knew, obviously a lot of them liked to get out their nut, right? And you would just hear them up. They would all be in this class. She would be playing the piano and they would all just be stomping their feet. It was called the Glee Club and they were all just stomping, singing tunes and having a laugh. And I ended up getting to know her through a boy that was doing a degree as well. So um, she, she was writing letters to the pro board for me and all that. Um, still wasn't getting it, but, but it's an old story, in it? Um, so if this event happens, like I'm just hoping like... Next year, there's just got to be an improvement on this one. Um, with less kind of... Less bumps in the road. Do you know what I mean? So, um, anyway. <laughs> pulled my heart out long enough. <laughs> um, so, I thought I would come on, because people are saying to me, like, oh, I've got to tell male jail stories. I'm not going to lie, right? I forgot half the shit that's went on, like, I need to, I need to detract, people tell me to write shit down, but I don't, I don't know about that, um, obviously, as I've said before, there's, there's people I can't talk about, just too close to home, and, uh, too high profile, whatever, um, but, I wanted to come on and talk about, a case that, um, was quite high profile, run about the time I got sentenced, so, this case is, um, the the person convicted in this case, and I, I actually know him from shots. His name's William Gage. Um, now some of you might have heard about this case, right? It happened in two thousand and two, March two thousand and two. Um, and what happened was there was a guy. It actually happened, no too far from where I'm from, right? It's it's a bit of canvas slang that's a bit more upscale for where I live. Um, and this guy was shot five times, five or six times, getting out his car, 11 o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night, on March 2002, right? Now, I had just got out of Pullman in February 2002, and I remember this happening. Um and I would like to say that obviously I've never had what even so much as one discussion with William Gage about his case so I would just like to point that out because see the thing is I know you don't really ask people these things especially William Gage is claiming he's innocent and there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff in his case that is definitely multiple grounds for reasonable doubt um so he was convicted in two thousand and four, I think he was convicted like maybe a couple of months before me because I remember seeing him in Glasgow High Court, but I didn't know him at the time. We were going down for Berlin. Um he had long hair and all that at the time. Um so kinda got to talk to him a couple of times in shots NIC, the National Induction Centre. He, he was sentenced to a 20-year recommendation, which is coming to an end run about just now. It should be coming to an end this year, I think, if it's not already. Um, so he'll be able to apply for parole now, but 
I don't know if the parole board are still saying things like if you're claiming to be innocent then we can't let you out so it's kind of like coercing you to confess to no confess to something but admit I would confess admit guilt but um, <clears throat> the guy that he was convicted of shooting um, it came out in the trial that he was um, under surveillance by the cops for three years leading up to the shooting now don't know if any of remember this, right? But back back then there was a it was like a task force. It was called the SCDEA, it was Scottish Crime Drug Enforcement Agency, right? Like kind of Scotland's FBI, whatever you want to call them, and they were investigating the guy who was shot dead for major scale drug trafficking, right? And then um, a couple of days before he was shot dead, he was. At a private function, like a fundraiser, with the former First Minister, Jack McConnell, and uh, the former Home Secretary, uh, what was his name? Shit, he's Scottish, John something. Forgot the second name. But he was, um, I think he was involved with the peace process in um, um, Belfast and all that, right? So... That's got a damn man on now. <laughs> Scottish guy, but... And the guy who was shot, his dad was like a multi-millionaire. Like, and he was fundraising for labour and... So politic politically connected, man. Um, and the weird thing is, with the case that William Gage was convicted for his... Um, there was a lot of discrepancies with these witness statements, right? Like, just strange, man. So, one of them was obviously the guy's, the victim's girlfriend. She was at home at the time, and she said she heard shots, or loud bangs, right, coming from outside the house, and she went to look out the window, and she seen a guy running away. He was wearing a big puffy jacket, right? No. There was another witness who said he was driving down a street round the corner for where this murder's happened and passed a guy with a mask on jumping into a car, right, a waiting car. The guy was, uh, I can't remember what he said the height was, but he, he gave his age or not and he said he seen him take his mask off in his car. He said the guy had what we call a ball face, right? Now, my dad used to call me that, right? Ball head, ball face and all that, right? So, a round face. That is not how William Gage, if you've ever seen a picture of him, does not have a ball face, right? But, um, that's not really kind of grounds for getting a not guilty or a, do you know what I mean? It's just one piece of a puzzle. Um, now, this motor that was described as a it was described as a white sab, right? And um, there was another guy who said he had seen this motor and, and he swore down it was a white Volvo or a sab, right? No. But one or the other, right? I'm no good with cars. I know what a white Volvo, I know a Volvo, obviously, but I'm not kind of clued up with cars at all. I don't even drive. Except some people up the wall, maybe. <laughs> Um, so, there was a, a white sab found burnt out in Easterhouse, like, two hours after this crime's happened, right? And, now, remember all these witnesses who have seen this guy? They've all said he was wearing, they've all described a white puffy jacket, a, a, a large jacket with, with, with padding, all this shit, right? No. When the cops have discovered this car burnt out, or partially burnt out, they found an anorak, right? A thin jacket. Um, and they're saying they found William Gage's DNA on it, but that's not what kind of I thought was weird. What I thought was weird was the cops said that they found six particles of FDR, fire, firearm discharge residue. So when you fire a gun, it sprays uh, like 
misty powder, you, gunpowder, you can't even see it, it's, it's invisible to the naked eye, but we're talking like tens of thousands of particles. They're saying they found six particles on this burnt, burnt jacket, three on the inside of the jacket and three on the outside of the jacket. It's a bit convenient. Um, sounds a bit fishy to me, man. Um, the 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 amount of particles were so like six particles. Come on, man! If he's just fired six bullets, five bullets with a gun, there's got to be a lot more than that, because as what I've just said, when you fire it. It's it'll spray your horns, maybe your maybe your cuffs. And we're talking hundreds of thousands of particles for the cartridge, right? Um, bit bit fishy, um, and also William Gage actually had an alibi for that night with his girlfriend. He was on the other side of the city in a bar, whatever, right? Um, and the the other weird thing is. The, the white car, so the cops have checked every CCTV camera between Cambus Lang and Easterhouse, right? And that motor did not show up on one of the CCTVs. But see, the thing is, right, the cops withheld that for the jury. And I don't know if any have ever seen that film, In the Name of the Father, right? It's about... For any of you know, it's a true story, it's about, there was a lot of IRA bombings in England back in the 70s, right, and uh, these these Irish people were just railroaded off the cops down there, because obviously there's been pressure for the top, because who runs the cops, the, po the politicians, they're the, they're the paymasters, do you know what I mean, and um, they put, I think it was, it was, there was like a full family, they just, tortured them in the cop stations and fucking imprisoned them for a year. They won their appeals like 15, 20 years into it, but it was no the point, do you know what I mean? And the funny thing is, um, don't, there was one guy convicted of that that I actually met in prison, wee Paddy Hill. He, so there's the Guildford Four and the Birmingham Six, but they were all railroaded for... IRA bombings, right? And there was a couple of guys in the IRA that I'm led to believe actually when they were arrested for un like other other crimes or whatever, they've said, Listen, you, you we we done that. You, they never done that, we done it. And they were like, they've never they never let, let them out. Um the funny thing is, there's an organization called Miscarriage of Justice Organization, right? And they had actually come up to shots to speak to William Gage. Um, and that was how I met wee Paddy Hill. Tiny wee guy, but an absolute lion, man. Um, the stories he told, man, you're like, what? Cops done that to you, man? Saying they were putting guns in his mouth and, like, threatening to throw him out a motor going 100 mile an hour. All this crazy shit, man. And... It just makes you kind of think that it's bad enough being in prison for something you did do. But imagine you were in there for something that you definitely did not do, right? And especially something like a murder. Um, it doesn't bear thinking about it. And see, the funny thing is, right, William Gage's trial, the the witness one, the, the witness statements were getting more detailed as time passed. Now, I remember when I was doing my degree in prison and there was a there was a whole textbook on um witness identification and not uh, telling lies, all the all these like deception, all these different chapters of this psychology book, right? And I'm sure I read in this textbook that Witness ID gets worse as time goes on. See, like, witness memories and try to remember shit and all that. And they were, the cops were lifting witnesses. They lifted a couple of them, I think. And 
took them to a police station and it was like, are you sure it was a white Volvo, no a white Sav, and da 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 and then I think the guy ended up kind of changing his statement a wee bit, so, sounds like a bit of coercion if you ask me, and um, also the guy's girlfriend who, her first statement said, I cannot identify this man, right, she said that in her first statement, and then you're going down like a year later, and she's saying, I seen him pass under the street lamp outside my house, and uh, and she ID'd William Gage in the dock. Now, the weird thing is, in her first statement, she says the guy was masked up, couldn't see his face, he was running away from the house. But then, at trial, she basically pointed him out from the witness box and said, I'll never forget those eyes. We're talking 11 o'clock at night. I don't know, I just... Um, and the funny thing is, I think there could be a bit of an explanation for that because she was taken to a police station, right, where it was a mannequin with that, see that burnt jacket on it and all that, and a mask on and a hood up so you can just see this bit. And um, maybe by the time that's went to trial, that sort of stuck in her memory, do you know what I mean? This is so, memory is so suggestible and like, it's like planting shit in subconsciously in your head and then by the time you go to court, you think that's what you've seen. Um, it's a bit, it's a bit weird, but, um, well, he's like, he's put, the, the funny thing is, right, I'm not going to lie, right, um, he, he was, um, Wally was like kind of known to the cops because um, he had actually been convicted of robbing a jewellers for like fucking 20 Rolexes or something, right? I think he wrote a book in that, I read it when I was in there. Um, I don't know if it's been self-published or published, but, but um, it was, it was, um, it was, it was well written. Um, so it has been known to them, but at the end of the day, it's like it just sound. I I think it sounded like there was a bit more going on with that case than meets the eye with the law. Do you know what I mean? Like, who knows? Like, that it could have came down for these politicians, whatever. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, uh, cause let's be honest, man. <laughs> Government is t in a lot of ways. In my view, just a mirror image of organised crime a lot. Yeah. Um, do you know what I mean? This, um, just, I don't want to get into it too much here, do you know what I mean? But it, there's a lot of it. People have got a lot to answer for. Um, but the, even his trial judge said in the report how like all the witness statements all clashed and like how the witnesses' memories got better with time rather than faded with time. Now, that tells its own story. But then when they got to appeal, the three judges were saying the case is comparing against the apparent. I read the I read the um the appeal shit online www.scottcourts.gov, whatever the fuck it is. And um There was a lot of legalese there, right? Like a lot of it's like pure breaking down just shit I've not got the brain capacity to take in just now. Because <laughs> uh, I get, I'm not going to lie, I've got a bit kind of jaded with all that kind of academic shit just now. Um, but even there was a, I remember when I was in shots in 2005, there was a Frontline Scotland documentary. Now, if any of you have ever seen this, Google it, uh, go on YouTube and watch it. It's actually pretty insightful. Because um, uh, it explains a lot. And I remember watching that in the NIC. Um, but... At the time, I was not really taking in a lot of the legal points and all that. So, but I've watched it a few times over the years, and it, it, at the very least, he should have been found not proven, without a doubt. Um, just because the case is just so 
full of holes. But I'm not a lawyer, so... But if I, if I was a member of a jury and I was reading all this shit, I would be like, ah, um, But when it's high profile, man, it's big stakes and all bets are off, innit, man? It's like, pff, if they want you, they'll get you. Do you know what I mean? Um, pretty pretty um, frightening shit, to be honest with you. Like, I know I've been in jail and all this kind of stuff, but um, nobody wants to be kind of on the... Well, I wouldn't want to be the victim either. Do you know what I mean? But um, I'm just going to read a wee bit of the... A newspaper article from 2012, right? So I was in... I was just in Berlin then, waiting to go to Lomos, right? And it says um, how he's had his, his appeal tossed out. Right, so it says uh, a man jailed for a gangland killing has lost a legal bid to overturn his murder conviction. William Gage, 40, was found guilty of shooting 30 year old Justin McElroy six times as he returned to his family home in Canvas Lang in March 2002. He was jailed for life and ordered to serve a minimum of 20 years. Gage has always protested his innocence and lost a previous appeal in 2006. His second was rejected at the Court of Appeal in Edinburgh. Gage's latest appeal was referred by the Scottish Criminal Cases Review Commission, which investigates possible miscarriages of justice. So he said multiple appeals flung out, man, know what I mean? Like, pff. but he's... If he never done this, he's fighting the system the right way, you know what I mean? It would be just so easy to just go, no, what, fuck it, man, and my life's over anyway, and just start getting up to all sorts of shenanigans. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, Mr McElroy was shot repeatedly as he returned home to his pregnant wife. Gage's trial heard the businessman was murdered outside his home, in Canvas Lang, the court was told that Mr McElroy had been leading a double life and had a conviction for a drugs offence. While he appeared to be working in his family business, Mr McElroy was also said to be mixing with drug dealers and heavily involved in the heroin trade. Undercover police were said to have been keeping a watch on him for three years before his death. His murder was supposed to have been ordered because he owed a drug debt of £50,000. Gage's appeal sought to convince five judges at the Court of Criminal Appeal in Edinburgh that he did not get a fair trial and was the victim of mistaken identity. I would definitely say he didn't get a fair trial at the least. Gage also challenged claims that a burned out Saab car, which prosecutors said was a getaway vehicle, was used in the shooting. He also claimed that there were substantial inconsistencies in evidence about the clothing which was said to link him to the shooting by traces of DNA and firearms discharge residue. Judge Lord Hamilton, sitting with Lords Reed, Car Carloway, Mackay and Nimmo Smith, rejected his appeal. Their written ruling stated, Qualitative criticisms can undoubtedly be made of the evidence in each of these strands, but... When the evidence is looked at as a whole, the case against the appellant was, in our view, compelling. They added that they were not persuaded the trial was unfair. Now, I think that's a bit... <laughs> Qualitative criticism, so basically criticising the quality of the evidence. So, basically, qualitative criticisms can undoubtedly be made of the evidence in each of these strands. <laughs> Oh, fucking hell, man. That's mad. Because it's like, they're admitting the evidence wasn't, wasn't that good. Um, after telling Gage his appeal had been rejected, there were shouts heard from the public gallery of The Fight Goes On and Keep Your Head Up. She's got a lot of support, no? Um, Speaking outside court, Gage's solicitor said, For eight years, William Gage has protested his innocence and we will continue to do so. He's deeply disappointed by the decision. Once we have an opportunity to read the judgment, to read the judgment we will consider whether to seek an appeal to the su Supreme Court. No, I don't know if that was his last appeal, to be honest. Um, 
because there's just kind of other ones about um other links like that are prior to this one um there's one from 2004 when the trial had started a woman who saw a man running away after her husband was shot dead has told a court she would never forget his starey eyes. Justin Macro died after being shot outside the front door of his home in Cambus Lang in March 2002. When his wife Tracy was asked if she could see anyone resembling the man at the High Court in Glasgow, she pointed at the accused, William Gage. Now remember something? Whoever this was that pulled this trigger was masked up like a ninja all you could see was this and i would say unless you're standing directly next to that person you're not gonna really see much of anything um do you know what i mean it's just mad um mrs mcelroy asked by alan mckay prosecuting what it was she recognized mr gage by she replied by the eyes i will never forget the eyes Quiz further about how certain she was about the resemblance, she admitted, they're the eyes I thought I saw that night, but I am not 100% sure. I'm not 100% sure, so what's that? Reasonable doubt, isn't it? Earlier, Mrs McElroy told how she was expecting her husband home when she heard three loud noises like a car backfire and went to her front door to investigate. Three loud noises, but then there's other reports saying five shots, six shots, so I don't know if... If she said she had free, like, well, I don't think that really matters anyway, do you know what I mean? At the end of the day, the guy was shot dead outside his fucking front door, man, and, and just dark shit. Um, as she opened the door to investigate, she saw a suspicious man running past under a streetlight outside. He was wearing a dark anorak with a large hood and something else covering his face in dark trousers. Um... So a dark anorak, I don't know if she said that in the trial, but in her first statement she was saying it was like this big puffy jacket, do you know what I mean? So there's just all these cons inconsistencies, man. Um, definitely a, definitely a bit of a weird case that in that sense, do you know what I mean? Um, She, Mrs. McElroy said she only got a glimpse of the man's face from the forehead to the bottom of his nose. Um, I just... Mad shit. So... As I say, I don't know if he's had any more appeals or whatever, but... Because um, obviously, like, it was somebody that I... I knew from shots and that, I thought I'd maybe come on and talk about it and, like, because it is quite an interesting case as well, do you know, it's like, it happened not far from where I live, do you know what I mean? Um, but, <clears throat> I hope that was enlightening, interesting, whatever, um, obviously there'll be some music maybe heard there and all that kind of stuff, so, um, I hope it was a. Uh, I hope it was entertaining. Um, and another thing, I'm, me, I'm trying to sort this. Uh, talk out with my pal Jerry, later on the night. I've had to mess up with these, streaming apps and video recording shit and, <laughs> oh, it's a nightmare sometimes. But I think the more you mess up with it, the more you'll figure it out. So, I think I've figured it out. So. Um, I'm going to try and date with him later because um, he he's got be he's got better stories than me, man. <laughs> if you think I'm interesting, um, so fingers crossed that it, it'll I'll I'll pop, I'll figure it out and record it without messing it up or blowing it up, whatever. Um, so I hope you like that. Um, and hopefully I'll be back on with another one with Jerry later on, see what you think it, so um, take care, have a good evening and I'll see you next time.